uh, for years. Stu is one of them. Uh, and uh, I never, ever thought I would uh, talk about this on the air, but I feel compelled to tell you that uh, seasons have changed again and it is becoming more and more apparent and you need to know what you're dealing with. Um, we keep thinking that this is a political thing. It is not a political thing. Um, I never thought I would share this and take take from it what you will. I mean, you can dismiss it. Um, I never have. If you are a longtime listener of this program, you know that uh, one of the reasons I left New York, besides the whole thing was going to burn itself down, uh, was I had a medical condition. Part of it was brought on by no REM sleep for about 10 years. Um, I actually found this to be very advantageous because I could get so much done because I just couldn't sleep. Um, and uh, for 10 years, I never had a dream. That's not good for your body. Uh, and so I was really kind of broken down when I moved uh, here. I feel much, much better and having dreams again, et cetera, et cetera. However, during this period, uh, I had what could be described as a dream. I do not believe it was. Um, but you might just say, well, that's ridiculous, whatever. In this dream, uh, I wake, uh, I, I come to in this dream, and I am in a hallway of the White House. And I'm, a, I'm walking into a big room where there's a bunch of cubicles, and people look up, like, who's walking in? And there are people behind me, but I don't know who they are yet. I just know I'm being pushed forward by them. The people are at the cubicles, and they look over the cubicle first at me, and then they, their eyes dart to the people behind me and then dart right back down. And I realize everybody in the White House is terrified of who's ever behind me. I kind of glance back and I see these people that are in uniforms that I've never seen before. Um, and um, I have seen them since, but that will be for some other time. But I'd never seen these before. And uh, we're being pushed through this place. And then we go into a room like the Situation Room. Okay, Big conference room, presidential uh, and uh, it's me and about three other people. And we're sitting down at that conference room table. And we were told just to wait there. So we do. And we start talking about, oh, I don't think this is going to be good. That's when two other people walk in um, and they were clearly identified in the dream. However, I'm not sure anymore that that um, image was anything other than helping me relate to what I'm about to tell you. Um, so uh, the one guy uh when they open the door, these guys in the uniforms are in the hallway, and the one guy says, uh, him, him, and him, take him out. And they get up and look at me, and I'm the only one sitting at the table still, and uh, they go out, the guards close the doors, and I'm now alone with these two people that are clearly in charge of something. They're not political. They're not in a political position. It didn't feel like. You know, it wasn't the president or anything like that. And um, they are uh, standing there, and then I hear three gunshots. And they said, uh, yeah, yeah, that happened pretty quickly for them. However, you, we're going to get to know. And, um, and I, I said, oh, okay. And they said, because you really have no idea who you're dealing with. And that's when one of them reached under like a Mission Impossible mask and ripped off his face. And he was Satan. He was a demon. Okay. Horrifying. I wake up. This was so um, vivid that I didn't tell anyone for months and not even my wife and it bothered me deeply and I didn't know exactly what to do with that information and uh, about a year, year and a half went by and um, it still was with me almost every day um, something you just don't forget and uh, I get a call from a guy who is you would know his name, big spiritual leader and he calls me, he says, can you come to my uh, can you come to my house I, I need to talk to you and I said, okay, sure, when? And he said, as soon as possible. I said, this weekend, okay? He said, yeah. So I fly out. My wife and I stay overnight. We're going to see him the next morning. And uh, that night, I have the exact same dream. And I wake up, and I'm just in a panic. And we get in the car. I don't tell my wife. We get in the car, and she said, this is going to be nice. And I said, yeah, except I'm having a hard time breathing right now. And she said, why? And I said, because I had that dream again last night. Remember, 10 years, no dreams, two dreams the same one, one, and then the same one about a year and a half later. And she said, you know, you should talk to him about that. And I said, no, 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 I, I, uh, if the Lord wants me to delve into it, he'll, he'll, he'll bring it up. Uh, no, I, I, I don't want to talk about it. And so we go into the guy's house, we sit down, he's sitting on a couch and he sits down, he sits right on the edge of the couch and he leans into me and he says, you know, sometimes the Lord talks to people. I said, uh-huh. And he said, um, and sometimes people like you, he'll, he'll speak in many different ways. Uh-huh. 
including dreams or visions. And I said, right? And he said, and this is when he leaned in, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I said, uh huh. And he said, do not dismiss that dream. Do not ever dismiss that. And I said, okay. He sat back and he said, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. That was it. I have made choices on this show based on that. You might find that ridiculous. Maybe you don't. I will never dismiss that. I'm sharing it with you today. What? 10 years later, because you must not dismiss what you're dealing with. We are not in a battle of politics. We're not. Politics and our whole culture has become evil. I started this hour talking about what this pedophilia stuff that is going around and how this, nobody, nobody will even say anything that the designer of this uses the hashtag Moloch. That is the God of child sacrifice. This is what we're dealing with. Now, I never thought that people, and I wrote the book, Eye of Moloch. I never thought the average person who was involved in all of this stuff even believed in any of that. But they are being put into situations where some leaders, and I'm not talking politically in this particular case, I'm talking about that designer. I do believe they know what they're doing. And we are worshiping Moloch. We are worshiping Baal. And they are demanding our children as a sacrifice. You have to get to a point to where you are going to choose a side. There is, there will be no one left on the benches. And if you think you can sit it out, you will end up on the wrong side. I, I urge you to uh, know who you serve. This is a different time in human experience. This is not normal. None of this is normal. And uh, it has been coming slowly in dribs and drabs, but for those who are really paying attention, it's methodical and it has taken a extremely disturbing turn. We are, we're no longer talking about issues of, you know, tax policies and how big the government should be. We're not talking about those things anymore. We are talking about the erasing of the fundamental right for you to choose between good and evil. You're, you're being coerced right now to accept one side. That is taking away your freedom of choice. That is God-given. Satan's plan was the other one. I'll go down. I'll return them all. Just give me the glory. I'll make the decisions for them. You have to start reading the news with spiritual eyes. I also urge you to start um, getting yourself back into the fold, whatever fold it is, of God. Get back to a place to where your eyes and ears are attuned to the spirit because you will not make it through this storm without it. As I used to say, there will come a time where you have to be so in tune. If the spirit says, stop, turn around, go the other direction, you don't question it. You do it. And unless you start listening to it now and developing that muscle, you will not stop in time. Please, we are in different times.